my study sources. The first one I'd like to share is titled The New Year by Grace No Crowell. And it reads, time is a gate in an ancient wall that opens to let Earth's pilgrims through onto a pristine meadowland into a year that is strange and new. No signposts point out the road ahead. No pathways lead where mankind has trod. And none can see to the years far left, save the ever watchful, omnipotent God. Lord of the high roads of the world, Lord of the years, oh, may we find waiting before us a better year than the one we have left behind. With its suspense and the fear of war and the threatening thunders that did not cease, clear the skies for us, gracious Lord. Give us the sun and a worldwide peace. The second one I will share is simply titled, Go Forth. The author is unknown, and it reads, Go forth to meet him bravely, the new year all untried, the things the old year left with us, faith, love, and hope about. And I do have copies of these for you that we shall receive at the end of the service, should you desire one. Well, as I read these words over and over and over again, the meditation of my heart set off a reverb in my spirit and echoed the eternal truth that Almighty God, the unfailing source of light and mercy, brought us to the beginning of this new year and is sparing us to love him, to love each other, and to keep his commandments in this new year. These words tip off a reverb in my spirit that God's grace enlightens our darkness and strengthens our weaknesses in this new year. Now prayerfully, we have resolved to forget the sins and sorrows of the past, cherishing, cleaving only to the wisdom and the humility they may have taught us. Prayerfully, we are inspired with new purposes and new hope in our hearts for the love of truth, for the love of truth, for the love of truth and goodness in this new year. Think seriously about it, church. A new year, yes. a new opportunity. Right. Lord, have mercy for us all. Mercy. Prayerfully, we will resolve to learn to number our days. To discern the solid meaning of these earthly days and the high and sacred purpose for which they are given prayerfully, whatever light may shine or whatever shadows may fall, we resolve, we endeavor to be kept in the fellowship of those who trust and obey and fear and honor and reverence and worship and believe and live in the love and the service of God the Father Almighty in the name of Jesus the Christ and for his sake by the presence and power of the Holy Ghost in this new year. Stay with me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Now, should there be someone wondering, well, when is she going to take her text? I invite you to open your Bible with me to the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 35. Calling your attention to verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 10. Old Testament, Isaiah, chapter 35. Calling your attention to verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 10. He touched me. Yeah. And 
oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something <coughs> happened. <coughs> and now,
For in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the word teaches us that the Lord is not flat concerning his promise, as some men count flatness, but is long suffering and seeming to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So Psalm 100, verse 5, and, and even continues and confirms for us, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth is direct to all generations. To be or not to be saved is the choice. Will you walk with the church? Journey with Jesus to the cross. Witness love in action. Focus on the power of his sacrifice in our lives today. Do you stand with him? Do you stand for him? Do you stand by him? Which disciple are you? What sacrifice do you willingly offer in remembrance of him for your life in the new? Do they know you are a Christian by your love in action? Will you walk with me, church? Yes. Learn how to move forward in confidence despite all the obstacles that of that confront you. Learn to never give up. God knows I have been back with this. The Holy Spirit has been whooping me. Who he has been whooping me since Thanksgiving. Never give up. Never give up. Understand now, anytime a man, this is mankind inclusive, chooses God's way, it won't be long until that commitment, until that life in the new is challenged. Yeah. It happened to King Jehoshaphat. Read all about it. Second Chronicles chapter 20. In your, your reading time, Second Chronicles chapter 20 and how King Jehoshaphat was challenged and what he did about that. You see, church, the lesson for us, be not dismayed. Whatever time, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. What? What, 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 what what's that you say? No, no, no battle plan? No strategy? No secret worries? Not to worry. Because we are encouraged in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15, part B. The Lord, the, thus says the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Fight the good fight. Stay the course. Keep the faith. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some other to win. Fight manfully onward. Dark passion subdue. Look ever to Jesus. He will carry you through life in the new. Think about the divinely ordered journey of Jesus. Divinely ordered journey of Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Look at it, church. Testing, temptation, trials, oh my. Brokenness, loneliness, despair, oh my. Bloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Bloom, despair, and agony on me. Anybody remember he haw <laughs> Bloom, despair, and agony on me. Well, church, these conditions, these situations, the circumstances, and the issues are found in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and Jesus went there. He went there. Not a pleasant situation, not a pleasant destination, but it was needful. It was necessary. And Jesus traveled there. And so do we, which are called by his name. Will you walk with the church? Life in the new follows the way of love, Lord, and mercy, and forgiveness, and self-sacrifice that Jesus was the first one to walk. It is not possible to get through life ever to fool yourself. Be not deceived. There is no shortcut. There is no bypass. You can see all this wonderful stretch of the road, all the bypass. There is no bypass. There are no detours. But we are assured in God's word, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, 
Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, but one in all points tempted by as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tell you there is none other. I I submit to you the time span between the ancient history and the time, the people, and the events, the history, you know, his story, and us are indeed the soul. There's a great connection in there. But however, the distance he made from heart to heart stirs is very, very short. And it stirs the imagination to look beyond the horizon, if you will, in the direction of the unknown to the future of life in the new. Now, I submit to you lack of imagination, lack of faith to believe and hope for something better. Fear of failure keeps man, mankind inclusive, burning in the circles of the past. God knows we need to learn how to let that past go. Make your peace with the past and let it go. And it's sad to hold it all too many sad to bring it down low. The circles of the fires of the past, treading for all the good just treading for We spinning wheels. We want to know we're fast. We talking loud, saying nothing. Will you walk with me, church? Let's take a pause for the cause here and practice a little introspection. Let us look deeper into ourselves, into our own thinking. Have you ever wondered at the imagination of God? Mm -hmm. Just think about it, okay? Let's use this example. Think about the grass of the field. Think about the beast of the field. And think about the man who plows the field. They are all product of God's imagination. Who but God could have thought of stars? Their mystery and beauty drew the wise men to seek and find the treasure of their divinely ordered journey, their fantastic voyage. You see, their imagination opened their eyes to a guiding God, God, star, excuse me. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And this is what the Bible has this time in Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. That is part about our many Negro spirituals. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with great joy. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with great joy. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with great joy. They rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Imagine their joy of life in the new, the newborn king. They look upon a baby who fills their heart with adoration, and they bow down and worship him. Now think about this church, because to whatever place they return, there, in the places where they return, new truth was proclaimed, a new message spoken, a new life lived. Thank God for Jesus Christ. You see, church, a new road must be trapped into a new day. You can't take the same old road into something new. You keep on buying things. You keep missing. You keep running to detours. It must be a new road, a new way leading to a new day. And by the God's, God's direction will lead us into life in the new. So does our imagination, our spiritual insight bring us into the discovery of the Lord Jesus Christ? How have you met him? Do you have a personal relationship with him? How you walk in church? How you live in church? Let us give thanks that God has brought us to this, the beginning of another day, another year, to use <coughs> it to enrich not only our own lives, but to serve others and to be useful members of the family of mankind, not just for our own. It's about more than me, mine, and mine. Me, myself, and I. Life in the new requires that we think of someone else to the glory of God. And when we, because we share the love of Jesus Christ, 
not only will our imagination be spurred, not only will our spiritual journey unfold with greater urgency to tell the story of Jesus and his love, we will understand and embrace the more dearly light and the new. We will know the true meaning of epiphany, epiphany, a revelation that brings us to our knees in adoration, sharing the joy of God's self-revealing. It is in this self-revealing, this epiphany, this life in the new, our imaginations and hearts are stirred, and we share, first of all, the joy of share, or excuse me, the joy of worship. Isn't it wonderful that the day in Bethlehem to this very day bow the knees of millions in worship? And today, brother, is today, kneel at the cross. Christ will meet you there. Come while he waits for you. Listen to his voice. Leave with him your cares and begin life anew. Isaiah 55, 67 encourages us, seek ye first of the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his book and let him return up to the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. We share the joy of giving. When joy stirs your heart and worship sets off a reverb in your spirit, what you give and how you give must be done to the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ and for his sake. Therefore, give your best. Give in self-commitment. You know, when we used to come to the prayer meeting, when the altar was here, you all would come and you would bow down around the altar. And this song was sung. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice day? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest when you yield him your body and your soul. God loves us. Give your heart, give your all, give yourself commitment to God. Your heart is what God wants. Your heart is what God treats. Your heart is how you reach out to others and profess and proclaim and grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest when you yield him your body and your soul. The joy of giving for the joy of giving for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yes. Life is choice driven. Ain't that good news, church? Amen. Forgiveness of sin, courage and trials, and faith for the future are available to apply to our own lives. And that's something to cheer about in this new year. Yes. That is life in the new. And now, after the excitement and festivity and fatigue and fullness of the Christmas season, I would venture to say that most of us desire a return to a regular rhythm of life, if you will, prayerfully with God's perspective as our priorities. Prayerfully, within the first week of this new year, you have devoted some time to reflection and preparation for focusing on who God is and why that moves you to a response of love for him. Allow me to stir your imagination one last time about how Jesus has made a difference in your life this past year or what it will be like without him. This poem is entitled, If Jesus Had Not Come. And the author is Paul Meads. And it reads, If I had not come, that's the way Jesus began one of his sentences. The haunting suggestiveness of it is overpowering. The smug complacency with which I have come to take Christmas for granted 
is suddenly seized and shattered. Gone in a trice, a million cheery life and merry, and merry lives. Suppose Christ had not come. Suppose there had been no manger bird, no star in the east, no angel rhapsody, no awestruck shepherds, no sermon on the mount, no healer of hurts and hearts, no reconciling cross, ah, no empty tomb, no empowering spirit, no community of the carrier. If Jesus had not come, our thinking about God would have gone along gropingly, forever faltering, forever fracturing. For it is, it, for is it, for is it not Jesus who, practically as well as conceptually, invests God with love, the universe with meaning, and life with immeasurably glorious possibilities? If Jesus had not come, what mind can compass the immensity of the gap, the vastness of the void that would have been created in the human story? History without this fairest figure, literature without its sublimest passages, music without its richest compositions, eloquence without its loftiest flights, philosophy without its Christology, serving the for others without its model and motive, sin without a conqueror, the world without a redeemer, death without a destroyer, heaven without assurance or a lure. Yeah. Ah, but I remember another word of his, I am come. My word, what a difference, he has come. To Mary's encircling arms, to the shepherd's wandering gaze, to Jerusalem's pools and pathways, to Galilee's hills and shores, to the classy rich and cashless poor, to the arrogant, the ignorant, the errant, to the resolute, the dissolute, the prostitute. There has never been a coming like it. Yes, there will be another, but it will not be like this one. More than an effort, it was an effect. More than an attempt, it was an act. More than a desire, it was a need. To reveal, to suffer, to die, to live again. To enlighten our darkness to liberate us from our chains, to save us from ourselves, to bring us to God and to, man and to mankind and to heaven. That's why he came. That's why he is here. Yes. Life in the new. And this new year, with renewed effort and personal commitment to the things of God, inspired with new purposes and new hope in our hearts for the love of truth and goodness, it is my prayer that as a church family, as the body of Christ, you be blessed with joys deeper than any sadness, gratitude happier than any regrets, hopes higher than the shadows of any discouragement, and the vitality, the strength, the stamina, the resolution to make every day what God on Christmas Day made for all of us. Life in the new. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Life in the new. Yeah. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh,